you. Welcome to the Dripping Stone Podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle. Yes, sir. How's it going? So good. Yeah? So, so good. You know what I did this week? What did you do? I mailed something to Ireland. Oh, wow. I know, yeah. You don't do that every day. No, in fact, I've never done it ever. And apparently, the woman at the postal office was just as confused as I was. <laughs> Why are you doing this, sir? <laughs> yeah. Well, we well, was, I know a guy. Yeah, we well, we know a guy. Yeah. We were sending um our old friend Dahi a couple of things and uh I had never mailed something to Ireland before. Overseas at all? Uh no. Out of country? Yeah, no, mailed a couple of things overseas. Uh we have a couple of listeners in the UK that we've mailed some stuff to. Gotcha. Um but Ireland was different in that we mailed a couple of little trinkets, if you will. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, a couple of, like thank yous, if you will. Right. And um I had to fill out some customs forms and I'd never filled out a customs form in this way. Like I have, you know, ports and, and sure. airport, things like that. Getting yeah. Off a boat. Yeah. But this was a different customs form because a question that was asked on this customs form was what is the total value of the goods that you're mailing? Mm. And I had legitimately no idea. Well, man, this is certified drip and stone memorabilia. It's priceless. Well, and that's that's what I put. I put priceless. Right. And uh, she basically said, no, nah, it has to have a value. <laughs> and I went, uh, I, I don't know. And she's like, well, what is it? So I, I explained it to her and she's like, 15 bucks? I was like, Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. So I, I want everybody to know that we went from priceless to 15 bucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's a fuzzy gray area. <laughs> it really is. Somewhere in there. Yeah, it really is. I like well, it. We, we, uh, we mailed Dahi um, some of the, the cool stuff that the, the Drep and Stoners get on Patreon. Yep. Mailed to him a couple of things just because he's he's been a huge supporter of ours and mm-hmm. uh, he sent us some really cool stuff. But I, I like the experience and the the dumb foundry on both ends of this experience. I came away both knowing more and knowing less at the same time. <laughs> As tends to be a bit of a thing for you in the conversations <laughs> that you have with people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> you're not wrong. Man. Like, I don't know. Is I that see just a commonality. A, is that just a me thing? <laughs> Maybe. Like, I go into situations like, uh, I have no idea how this works, and then I know more, but I also know less. <laughs> I feel like a lot of those situations for me, like, I just completely, like, shut out what happened and just like i've just got to get through this and as soon as i'm <laughs> through the experience i never think about it again yeah no never. that's not me in fact like i dwell on it yeah it just <laughs> sticks with you like why did that just happen yeah like it, what can i do to prevent that next was time? i the awkward one <laughs> was she the awkward one i mean that's probably 90 percent of it for me is like it's always me <laughs> are I you just expectantly always the awkward one or you, you expect to be the awkward one. Sure. So you go into sure. the situation like I am the awkward one here. That was a thousand percent my fault. That well, that actually might be easier. Yeah. It's just a like, default. Yeah, like you just so, like I am the one, this situation is my fault. Yeah, I don't know what I did, but like somehow I made that weird. And just move then on. we move on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, on that note, yep. you wanna drink something? Sure. Yeah, we are Kyle. Yeah. Jumping into something that we've never done on the podcast before. Crazy. We actually we talked about this, teased it, if you will. Yep. Uh at the beginning of the year. Oh. I know. Nice. And that is a foray into something that we know very little about. Yeah, We've both experienced, especially one of us. Yeah, well, very true. <laughs> yeah, and that is the world of gin, gin, G I N, G I N, gin. Now, you've had gin. I've had it. Uh, I've had gin. Yeah, a, f- a good amount, more than me. In, in fact, like my relationship with gin actually predates my relationship with the brown liquor. No kidding. Yeah. In fact, like, wow. Yeah, it really does. My first drink if you will in in that kind of respect was a uh, gin and tonic that was like my first go-to drink hmm yeah interesting yeah and uh just thinking about what mine was (laughs) sex on the beach probably a shambord sour (laughs) (laughs) really big fan early it's delicious it's delicious what's not to like candy yeah melted candy Mm. can't beat it (laughs) okay i mean you know I'm not even sure what Shambord is. <laughs> I just super sweet. I know what that bottle looks alcoholic. like. I don't know what yeah, it is. Though. I can pull that bottle up. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we have one. Ironically, I've enough. never bought a bottle of Shambord. Right, we I had, had a lot. Those and Midori. <laughs> yeah, I took a lot of that early I on. I believe that. I the, think that's like yeah, that is the college dream. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> you know, like the Chambord sours, the Maduri sours, the vodka cranberries. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it was a uh, it was a gin and tonic. A gin and tonic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't. You've know... always been a more sophisticated gentleman. I got to be honest. Yeah, not as well of a dresser, but definitely more sophisticated. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I'll agree. <laughs> Stamp approved. Um, yeah, one of my first like drinks was a gin and tonic, and I've never look back like i've even throughout all of our years of dripping stone like i i love a good gin and tonic um and it's just something it's still that, your grass cutting beverage it really it <laughs> legit is that's very true patreon <laughs> actually that might be out in the the ether at this it point. might be it's not it, just it was patreon. well it was definitely on patreon first yeah yep it always is every time but I, I have an affinity for and a knowledge of a little bit of a knowledge of gin. Uh, like I said, that predates my, my whiskey knowledge. And um, I'm, I'm excited to to dive more into gin. Same these, man. Like just a couple of weeks ago, we were at your house and we, we did a little quick little run through of some gins. And like, man, I was all on board. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, for sure. So we have. I was so inspired that I bought my own. I know. I see that. Yeah. Like and and a. Uh, a one that I am infatuated with right yeah. now. Like it yeah. is impressive. So there are a couple of styles of gin and, and we'll get into that. But first, what I want to do is is just kind of talk about what gin is. I like it. Before we, we even sample some. Okay. Okay. Huh. I know. Patience. I know it's, it's, it's tough, but it will pay off. Patience okay. will pay off. Yeah. Okay. So gin is what is referred to as a, a neutral grain spirit. That's, that's its base. Meaning mm. it's clear. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't really taste like anything. Okay. A la vodka. Right. And I know that there are people that are like pissed at us right now. Tater water. Correct. Right. Or wheat water, depending. Right. Wheat. wheat. So it is a neutral grain spirit. And from what I can tell in the extensive research I've done is that this is barley. This can be wheat. This can be rye. This can be from potatoes. This can be from cer other cereal grains it can really be any sort of grain interesting uh, or to some degree even potatoes i think I, I don't know there might be gins made from potatoes i know that's kind of like a vodka thing right um but it's a a neutral it is a grain spirit so maybe not potatoes in that case but it is something that you'll find a lot of distilleries do even almost everyone yeah like they almost always have a they gin all, yeah Available. Uh, even your, you know, big boy whiskey makers have gins available. Why is that? And it, it's because, um, you know, they're it's it's easy to make. You that, know, that's my assumption. That's, that's really that's kind of what There's it comes no down age to. No statement exactly. needed. No. It's just it as soon as we distill it, it's ready to go. Exactly. It literally like you you take it off the still and you you bottle it. Right now, obviously, there's a different there's a bunch of different processes, and uh, we're not getting into all of those nuances. But you know, it's it can be distilled multiple times. You know, you've got like a, a very popular um, vodka brand here in the United States, Tito's. Like that's like distilled like a billion times, something like that. No kidding. Yeah, I think it says on the label, distilled one billion times. Like a McDonald's sign. Billions and billions distilled. Served. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. But it can be distilled multiple times, and that kind of gets a, a more refined product. But ultimately, it is a, a distillate, a neutral grain spirit, so it generally has no flavor. Mm -hmm. That is then cut with water, but it is also infused or m melded with or steeped with, if you want to go that far, uh, with certain botanicals. And what is a botanical? A uh, botanical can be something that can be floral. A botanical can be even flat, like literally flowers. You can right. you can distill um, or you can blend something organic flowers in there. Yeah, generally organic. Um, things like mosses, things like berries. Things like uh, fir trees, th things of that nature. Something yeah. from nature. Something from nature, indeed. The kind of the characteristic of a gin is that it is pre predominantly juniper based. So that is the the predominant botanical. Okay, but that's also not entirely true, as we'll kind of find so out. You're lying to me. And, well, no, no, I'm just I'm just withholding some truth. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's predominantly juniper forward. Gotcha. And and juniper is that like it's a berry, but it, it kind of is um, well juniper flavored. Interesting. Yeah. Is there a reason Piney. why that you know that juniper was the? I do. Okay. What's yeah. That? So why was that the golden child? Gin has its roots in a uh, another kind of like. 
gin adjacent distillate and that's uh genevieve genevieve something something like that and it's um finds its roots in the the netherlands the the dutch as a whole started kind of distilling this now you can look up a bunch of different versions of history of this in which you know some people are like the the alchemist figured this out and these like uh, you know very early chemists right. figured these things out but basically it was someone figured out from processes of brewing kind of like the the same kind of beer process right. that we are going to make a neutral grain spirit and the spirit doesn't taste great so how can we make it taste better ah well we have this plant in abundance right in this case it was juniper so why don't we add that to it and juniper has a very distinct bitter florally kind of piney note mm -hmm. that became the thing interesting so you have uh, all of these varieties of styles of gin the theoretically the predominant base note is juniper and then there's variations therein gotcha now i will say this and we'll experience a little bit of that as or we'll experience a little bit of this as well is that definition has changed as the beverage has evolved right from what i can tell is there's no definitive like this is gin whereas like you know this is what makes scotch or this is what makes champagne Th this is right so like it is generally this thing we all kind of agree that it's this thing right so it's like we all kind of agree that this is vodka it's generally this kind of a base with right these things added sure sure but there are variations of that and gotcha. uh we'll experience a little bit of those cool yeah so that's kind of a, a very rough and um tumble version of gin history i like it I, I will say that a lot of our friends in the uk yeah uh will like gin is more i'm gonna say it's more popular in europe the uk specifically than it is here for whatever reason like i, I think it, it took hold in europe and that's where it, it's super popular which is not to say it's not popular in the united states but you mean currently currently and formally too yeah well i just kind of feel like when i think of like the roaring 20s sure bathtub gin yeah like that that seems like that was like the end thing mm -hmm. at that point in time yeah and it's just like it, it's had a very like i feel like american spirits have just been very oh yeah you know what what's in style right now yeah all right now that this is in style or well and that's all right uh, what's next and you're not wrong and that's just because of our, our american centrist kind of view of things just because obviously we're here in america like that's what we hear right and you're not wrong like um prior to I think the sixties, um, clear spirits, like that was the thing. Right. So gin and, and vodkas, those were the thing. I mean, you could absolutely get whiskeys prior to that. I mean, the whiskey has been a thing, you know, for quite some time, Obviously, but yeah. like those were the more popular drinks. Honestly, I think it's because they were just easier to make. So it's easier right. to make. Yeah, you don't have to wait. Exactly. You don't have four to four years. Exactly. You don't have to, to wait for your bottled gin. And bottled bourbon. Exactly. You just there it is. There's your gin. Yeah. My understanding is that gin has pretty much been like baseline popularity in the UK. Right. Although I know recently it's kind of seen as a dad drink. Interesting. Yeah. From what I can tell, and and our listeners in the UK, let us let us know is that is that the case? Or are we just botching that? But from what I can tell. It's kind of viewed as whiskey was in America like 15 years ago. Like, oh, my dad drinks that. Sure. Or my mom drinks that. Right. So I, th I think it's starting to kind of become more along those lines. But here in America, because there's not like we're not in a huge gin boom time, you have a lot of people who are experimenting with gins. Right. So, you know, we have the ability to like, oh, what's what's going on here? Right. I, I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. And. My prediction is that gin might be the next kind of big boom thing. Gotcha. That's based on nothing. Cool. <laughs> well, we'll hold you to it. Other than that's just what I think, or right. what maybe it's, maybe it's a hope of yep. mine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're 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 encouraging it. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah. And I encourage everyone to uh, to taste some gin along with us. So if you if you uh, have a bottle of gin in the house, grab you a yeah. bottle. Get in a comfy chair. Yeah. Pull out that favorite gin and sure. uh, drink along with us. Or if you've never had gin, just pull out. Anything with the word G-I-N on the front, and we'll see what happens. G-I-N. Yeah. My recommendation is this. We drink. 
I like it. <laughs> okay. So we have a couple of different variations on, on our table here. Okay. And I recommend we start with a, a baseline kind of uh, tried and true gin. A basic gin. A basic gin. Gotcha. And I, I don't mean basic in a demeaning way. Sure. I mean basic in like you can find it everywhere. Gotcha. And that is Tanqueray. Tanqueray. Everybody knows a little TT, a little Tanqueray and tonic. Exactly. And in fact, like from what I understand, Tanqueray was really developed for mixing in a gin and tonic. Interesting. And a little spoiler, Kyle. Yep. A little teaser, if you will. Whew. We're going to make a gin and tonic later. Yeah. Your favorite cocktail. Uh, Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. it might be my favorite. Yeah, it's probably my favorite cocktail. Yeah. Over yeah. tiki. Ooh, that's <laughs> tough. A, a gin, from my understanding, must also be distilled to at least 80 proof. Okay. So 40% ABV. I think in the UK, like the ABV system is a little bit wonky. So I think it's like 37% in England gotcha. and UK. I don't really know how that works. Uh, but here it must be, from my understanding, 40% ABV uh, or 80 proof. Tanqueray comes in at 94.6 proof. Ooh. Now you can get Navy Strength Gin. I know. Well, and Navy Navy Strength Gin good. is a high proof gin. How, and how, how does it go up? The highest I've seen is like 120, oh, but I th- I think it goes higher. Wow. Yeah. I I'm, don't don't hold me to that. I went Owen Wilson on that one. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So let's let's get into good old Tank Ray. Let's do it. Yeah. Never had it that I can think of. It's a little taster bottle. Oh yeah, yeah. Totally. We got these little like cute little shot glasses. Cuties. I know. Tanqueray is what is known as a London dry gin. And I'll explain that in a second. Here you go. Oh, gracias. Yeah. Can I have a little taster? There's a lot on the outside of that one. <laughs> There's a lot on the outside of this one, too. Oh, you mean gin? Yeah. <laughs> no sound. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So we're not <laughs> we're not using the standard Glen Cairns here, and that's okay. But you can if you want to use tasters for uh, for a gin. But you'll find well, that... We're going to save those for the better ones. Okay. You'll find that this gin is uh, clear. This gin is in. Yeah. So what a, a London dry gin is, or that style, and there are a couple different styles. The London dry style is a juniper forward, and it is on the, well, dry side, meaning that the sweetness of the uh, the distillate should be minimal. Minimal. Or, you know, less than, I guess, the other styles, if you will. Sure. So it is a, a dry gin is where, where the, uh, the term comes from. On the nose. Smells like gin. What does that smell like? I always get alcohol mm-hmm. there there's you, you can smell the proof but then there is that earthy botanically yeah note yeah that that herbal note yeah it's like i want to say pine but it's like a it's like a specific it's like a is it a douglas fir is it a you know yeah. like what which which brand of pine is it it, it always leans to me like sweet pine and I, I don't know which of those sure. are like sweet yeah but like sweet pine Right, but it definitely is like super herbal. Yeah, for sure. And as we as we uh, nose others and taste others, you're gonna begin to see the differences between them. I mean, it smells great though. It really I mean, does. It's, it, it myself discovered recently about gin is that like that botanically florally note. We we talk a lot in whiskey in terms of honey and yeah sugar right. as the sweetness. Right, but this just has like a very different like herbally sure. kind of essence to it. It's almost more. In that realm of like soap or yeah, you know yeah, and it, cling. It, it's it's funny that you say that Cleanly. particular word because Carol, my, my wife, she is not a big fan of gin because she feels like it tastes like soap. Mm. It's like um, you know people eat cilantro and they're like, nope, tastes soapy. Right. It, it's very similar in that sure. way, and I think it's just that like strong botanical fresh note that like can lean soapy. Right. I one hundred percent agree. And to me, like you would say, like pine notes, and it would conjure Christmas, but it doesn't do that. To no. me, it conjures like just bright. It almost is like spring day, like cool summer day. Yeah, perhaps almost like a touch of like freshly cut cut grass. grass. Yeah, maybe that's why it's the perfect lawn mowing drink. Maybe. All right, shall we? Yeah. Enough sniffing. Time for sipping. Man, there was a very specific taste. Yep, it's candy. Hmm. Maybe cotton candy. I can see that. To me, gin is a a drink that tastes and smells similar ninety percent of the time. Like right. very rarely am I like, whoa, huge curveball. Right. Like what you get on the nose is pretty much what you get on the palate. Right. But you saying cotton candy, I get that note all the time. Yeah. 
It's a it's a different kind of sweetness. Yeah, it's like like it's just that 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 aftertaste of after you've like melted the cotton candy. Yeah, that aftertaste and this aftertaste are like very similar. Yep, not like any specific flavor of cotton candy, but like just all cotton candy. Yep, yeah. For for those of you not in America, that's a candy floss. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, mm. bizarrely so. Like yeah, pinpoint. And and what you know, I think a lot of people. First of all, we're drinking this straight and gin. I think it's you can drink it how you want it. Uh, I have no problem putting gin in a Glencairn and just sipping on it. Right. Most people use gin in cocktails. Right. Um, te- depending on who you ask, technically a martini should be made with gin. Sure. Now to call it a gin martini makes it you know specific. Right. If you say martini, from my understanding, my research, it should be made with gin. Yeah. If you want a, a martini made with vodka, you have to say vodka martini. Right, which sounds right. Right, I feel like that's the more common adage: a vodka martini. Right, a just a gin martini. Just to me, I don't feel like I hear that that often. But I'm gonna say, ninety percent of restaurants you go to or bars you go to, I would like a martini. They're gonna do it. They're vodka? gonna do it with vodka. No shit. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why. Hmm. Mm. Tequila martini. Ah, it's probably something. There's a drink like that. It's called something. Yeah, I quite like it. You know, in the world of gin, this is your baseline, and there's nothing not to like here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got all the herbaceous botanically notes that you like, um, or that you would want out of a, a gin. Yep. And if you are interested in gin, it's a great place to start. I got you. Yeah, bottle's not expensive. What's interesting to me, if this is the baseline, yeah, give me a baseline bourbon, Jim Beam. So Jim Beam, I don't think is going to be as sweet as this. Nope. Especially not at eighty proof. Nope. It's going to be watery and not have as much s- sweetness specifically, but even flavor. Yeah. I feel like it's got more going on in this than just like an 80 proof Jim Beam. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's interesting that like, you know, it has that that prominent sweet. Yeah. Right off the bat. Right. And I, I wonder if, you know, a lot of these gin distilleries don't disclose their grain, but I know that like some of them are using just straight wheat. Right. Some of them are using malted barley some of them are using variations in rye and interesting like that. so i know that that definitely plays into it what i like about this is the mouthfeel and the mouthfeel of all gins to me lean even though it's like it's clear and you would think water it always leans a bit on the oily side for me hmm. and I, I don't know if that's just like the botanical nature I, I don't know but like even like even in the glass if you look at, at it it's a little bit clean like there's a little bit of a syrupy nature to it yeah and there, there's there there is a freshness you know, in that in that realm of like a toothpaste, cert breath freshener realm that gin has. That, I know exactly what you mean. You yeah. know, it just has that kind of like you. Yeah. You know, you got that freshness feeling to it. Yeah. Mouthwash. Mentos. Mentos. The yeah. fresh maker. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you're right. Do 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 Fresh goes better with life, with mentos fresh and full of life. Nothing gets to you, staying fresh, staying cool. With mentos fresh and full of life, mentos freshness, fresh goes better. Fresh goes better with mentos fresh and full of life. Do-do-do. Mentos, the fresh maker. Available at your local supermarket. Nailed it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it does feel mentossy. It does. It, no, you're right. Tic-tac-y. It does. Tic tacky, mentossy, um, surdy, altoidsy, altoidsy. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and and that's that's what I like about it too. Like, there's a, a a levity to it. Indeed. You know, you think about even your most curveball-y whiskey, if you will. Mm-hmm. Compared to gin, it's dark and brooding. Yeah, gin is very light and yep. kind of brighter. Exactly. And you know, whiskey, beer, definitely more of a like. Ugh, right, just kind of settle into it exactly. Yeah, and, and that's I, I go back to the lawn mowing cocktail. Yeah, like that's that's why it is for me a lawn mowing drink. It's like it makes so you, much it's, sense. It's fresh. Yeah, yeah, it totally does. Yeah. Before we move on to our next gin, I want to run you through a couple of gin styles. Yeah. Okay. So we had the London Dry Gin. Yep. Things like Tanqueray, Bombay Sapphire, Bee Feeder, these like big names. Right. Okay. And a lot of these, you know, are the are the big boys. I think Tanqueray is owned by Diageo. Um, so you know, you've got the big players. Yep. And a lot of those are the London Dry Gin. Juniper Ford, 
slightly citrusy, which I don't think we mentioned citrus, but slightly yeah, citrusy. I get that. I get a limey. Then limey. You have, I thought I, I literally was going to say that at oh, one yeah. point in time. I'm like, it feels it feels limey. Squeeze a lime on this. Oh yeah, to me, and that's like gin screams like I need a lime. Yeah, but it's I think partially because of my love of gin and tonic. Right. A gin style that we don't have, which is why I want to bring us all up now, is the Plymouth Gin. It is as a, in the rock. Uh, actually, sort of, huh. in that it's only really fla- found it found. Wow, flounder. It's, yeah, it's only really found around Plymouth, England. So there's there's definitely some sort of connection. Some sort of a connection. Yeah, yeah. indeed. All um, And I read in a couple places like it can only be made by a certain distillery, but I, I'm not super sure if that's true. It sounds bullshitty. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, uh, but I know that it can, from what I understand, can really only be made in that area, and it is a little bit sweeter than the London Dry Gin because well, it's not dry, sure. um, and it has actually. <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah, that's know. a good point of like if that is a London Dry, the Tangeray. Yeah, like nothing about that suggested dry to me. Nah, that's I, actually kind of interesting. It's it's a little sweet to me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, a little sweet. Well, a little, <laughs> rather <laughs> sweet. Yeah. What does this remind you of? Cotton candy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dry. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dry good. cotton candy. Good point. <laughs> uh, but Plymouth Gin is supposed to be a little earthier too, like gotcha. a little more dirt. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um. In fact, the next two gins that we're gonna have are. I think are considered new wave gins. New wave? Yeah. And again, these are like really, really um, kind of fuzzy gray area categories. Gotcha. We love a good category. We love a good fuzzy category. Right, exactly. Just like our navels. <laughs> fuzzy navels, which is also a drink. Um, is the, it? Yeah. I just like fuzzy navel. You like navel? Fu- no, you don't like fuzzy navels. You like navel, navel fuzz. fuzz. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gross. Good point. So new wave gins yep. um, tend to put a little bit less juniper forward and they put more emphasis on other botanicals like the next two that we're going to try. You've seen a super popular quote unquote new wave gin is Hendrix. Oh, show. Sure. You know, that's a new wave. It is a new wave indeed. Um, and Hendrix is, to be fair, one of my go to or used, at least used to be one of my go to um, gins mm-hmm. just because it's. I mean, it's solid, man. Yeah. It's it's a great gin, and we'll we'll do a Hendrix tasting on the future because uh, I got a couple of Hendrix bottles we can go. Through. Yeah, you do. Yeah, apologies. Sure. You said new wave, and what yeah. was the aspect that made it new wave? Is it's that uh, it, it, avoiding the juniper, not a, going more experimental, on not the... avoiding the juniper. It's still there, but pulling back on it okay. a little bit, okay. and like and playing, that's what makes it new wave. Correct. Gotcha. Playing with the botanicals that are used. Okay. So, and that's what these next two gins are. I would consider them new wave gins. Okay. Yeah. And then you have the Navy Strength Gin, which is what I, I mentioned. It says clocking in, what I'm reading here is actually from an Eater article. Uh, it says that this gin can clock in at 57%, but I know that I've seen higher than that. And a lot of people use these in your probably maybe least favorite cocktail, the Negroni. I was going to do that. We were going to do a Negroni experimentation. And I figured, nah, let's go gin and tonic instead. We'll, we'll get you to Negronis eventually. Yeah, I'm going I'm to build up. You know, you know what? And and. Up. I, I was talking with uh, my sister about this. I I am super surprised that you just don't love Negronis. And here's why. First of all, gin, the botanically nature. Yeah. But Negronis are bitter. And I know you like that bitter. So I'm, I, we'll get you there. We'll, I'm going to we'll build up to it. Yeah. You know? There's a Jennifer, which is what I mentioned earlier, which is kind of like the precursor to gin. Uh, it's a little bit more malty. And it uh, it drinks more like a cognac. In what way? Like more... Raisiny can be more raisiny, can be a little grapey. Gotcha. Too. Yep. Gotcha. Old Tom Tanny can be. Yeah. Gotcha. There's Old Tom Gin, which kind of is somewhere in between the Genevieve and regular gin. Uh, again, a little bit more malty sweetness, um, and that's just again because of the the um, grains that they're using. And then finally, the flavored gin. And you see a lot of the big boys playing with those things now. Like if you were to go to you know your local liquor store, you might find like a lemon flavored gin, mm. and it's like a specific flavor. So like flavored vodka has been around for a while. Sure, they've got vodkas and all flavored kinds of whiskeys. Fl- flavored whiskey's been around for a while. So flavored gin is basically the same Hopping idea. On that. Yep, a, a very popular version of a flavored gin is what's known as slow gin. And it's made from like S L S L O E, not S L O W. Ah. Yeah. It's made from slow berries. Well, I don't really know what a slow berry is, but it's like more of a liqueur 
tastes mm-hmm. more like a liqueur than it does like a distilled product. Gotcha. So I think the ABV is a little bit lower and it tends to be a little bit sweeter. Interesting. Yeah. So those are the kind of like the big categories, if you will. There you go. And if you talk to, you know, some other gin people, some other gin experts, y- you might get different answers. Sure. But it's because it, from what I can tell, there is no definitive, no governing body here. Yeah. Exactly. Which is interesting, which is, you know, like, I agree as like, you know, um, most categorical things within spirits oh, yeah. are almost always location based. People love to market champagne things, is champagne exactly. because it's in champagne. Exactly. And, you know, Kentucky bourbon, like mm-hmm. it, it's always like kind of like based around an area. So for gin to just kind of be more of a like, nope, it's just gin. It is what it is. Yep. Yeah. And I wonder if it's just because like it's so ubiquitous or honestly, I think it's because no one thought to market it that way at some point. Right. Right. You're probably right. Yeah. And at this point, like it's so it would be hard to kind of come back on that and say, damn it. Yeah. 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 Missed that Somebody one. missed Somebody missed the mark. Yeah. Diageo, you missed it. So yeah. sad. Like, how, how did you not see that coming? It, it should have been sad. a should have been a, like, a, no, we're going to call this. Blah blah right. gin. This is what gin and is, and that can only be from blah blah. Correct. Like, <laughs> well, why didn't you call like, like Scotch is whiskey? Why didn't you call it like, you know, define what London dry gin is? Maybe that's this coming. Is, maybe. maybe. Maybe that's like down the road. Yeah, maybe. Shall we move to another? Yeah. Okay. So these two are generally considered uh, new wave gins. Okay. Let's start with the one from Scotland. From a distillery that you know a bit about. I do. This is from the Brooklotti Distillery, or Brooklotic, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But I changed my mind, Kyle. Yep. I, I recognize that we have another London dry gin. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah. It was on the table. So before we move to the new wave gins, was it, which I mentioned earlier, let's let's do one more London dry. Okay. Okay? Yep. And I think it would be cool because we have a little bit left in our Tanqueray bottle. Yep. Um, let's pour the Tanqueray back into our little tasters so that we can kind of compare between the two. I like it. Yeah, this is uh, this is Gordon's London Dry Gin, which I'm sure everybody will remember from our James Bond episode. Whew. That's going that's going back a, a bit. James Bond in Casino Royale orders a beverage that yep. requires Gordon's two measures, two measures of Gordon's. Ooh. What's interesting about Gordon's is that it is a Canadian gin. Yeah, yeah, but London Dry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's incredible that James Bond, the British of British people, right. Would have been like, yeah, give me some Gordons. Which is, maybe it wasn't always Canadian. Maybe like back in the Ian Fleming days, maybe it was. Good point. What uh, What's the ABV on this? 40, right? 40, 40 even? Yeah. On the nose, it's not as pronounced juniper. Yeah, a more subtle juniper, juniper note. Yep. The Tangeray had a higher proof. Yep. Yeah, you can taste it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the Gordon's definitely like a little watered down. Now, but going back and forth between the two of them, I now taste the dry aspect. Like, it, it's almost making my mouth, like, a little dry. I do on the Gordons. Yeah, the Because Gordons. it's not as sweet. It's exactly. watered down. Exactly. So it has a more prominent, bitter note. For sure. But you can definitely, like, if, if this is indicative of the style, you can definitely tell that, like, they It's are, awkward drinking out of these motherfuckers. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> little tiny mm. little tiny glasses. Those of you on Patreon and then eventually on YouTube, you can see our little tiny taste of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they are weird drinking out of them. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're not even shot glasses. They're like now, I feel quarter like I just, shot. I can just swallow the whole thing. <laughs> like the whole glass? Yeah. Okay. Just the whole thing in there. Oh, you weren't supposed to do that? Shit. Might cause problems like later a gusher, down the road. You know? Just <laughs> oh, gross. I mean, with the Gordons, dare I say it tastes like an inferior product. Yeah. I it mean, it definitely just, does. It's not bad. It just... It'll get you there. Yeah. It has all the basic elements. It's Yeah, it, it is just a great value essence sure <laughs> great value for those of you who are not in the united states is a uh store brand yeah yeah we don't want to mention a, that store a mart with walls <laughs> there it is yeah and i will say like good on tank array because back and forth between the two the tank array is definitely the superior product here yeah price wise they're probably pretty close yeah i think a bottle of tank array is like 26 bucks maybe like a whole so bottle you, might, of you it. Might, might save a dollar or two yeah but clearly superior oh yeah if given the choice Tanqueray over Gordon's all day. Yeah. Now let's move to the new wave, shall there we? There you go. Okay. But I think they deserve a better glass. Oh, do they? I think so. All right. So this is our, our first new wave gin. Yep. And this is from our old friends at Brook mm. And this is the botanist. The botanist. This is 46 ABV, 92 proof. This is an Isla dry gin. 
conceived, distilled, and handcrafted on the island of Isla uh, with 22 foraged island botanicals. This is distilled from 100% grain-neutral spirits. Uh, it is a product of Scotland, like I said, distilled at the Brook Lodic Distillery. And I got actually some bottle words here. Ain't no bottle words on the other stuff. You want to hear <laughs> it? Too little. Yeah. Yeah. The Botanist Isla Dry Gin. The Botanist is a gin of layered complexity, a progressive exploration of the botanical heritage of our Isle of Isla. Nine classic gin botanicals are augmented by 22 herbal herbs and flowers forged responsibly and by hand from the hills, shores, and bogs of this fertile Hebridean island by our own professional forager. How do you Sick. get that job? Right. I want that job. What yeah. do you do? I'm a professional forager for Brooklyn. I'm the cousin of the master distiller. Yeah. That, okay. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the result is a roller coaster botanical odyssey in a glass. Mm. If you. Here. I love it. Like on the on the bottle, it has the twenty two there. Yeah, it has twenty two. Twenty two. But c- can you can you read all this? Yeah, you want me to? It's all in Latin. Triforium <laughs> represent Cretagus monogen. Nailed it. It's the uh, all of the Latin terms, the scientific terms for all of the botanicals. I presume Sick. it's kind of cool. Yeah, it, it's almost like it, it's looking like a like a science textbook it, on a bottle. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Shall we? Indeed, we shall. It's <laughs> aggressive. No. Oh, it's on I your shorts. Love me. I just on my shorts. <laughs> so again, in the Glencairn, I mean, it is water clear. It ain't even it might be more clear than water, Kyle. You think? <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, natural water, yeah. sure. It's purified shit. G- give yourself a little rolly roll first. I mean, twenty-two. Yeah, different different things like botanicals. In 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 our love of the what's the word? Drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and in, in, in our love of right, it's right there. Like the 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 taste of the thing from the area that it came from. Terroir. The terroir. Yeah. Like this, this, this don't get any more terroir than this. <laughs> you nailed it. Like Thanks. you, you can so represent an area. Like this like, is what grows here. Yeah, and we're gonna infuse this drink with that. Absolutely sick. And and I I will uh, also tease a little bit. Our next gin is the exact same way. Yeah. So on the nose, oh. you you get. Some of the classic gin nature. Sure. Like the juniper yeah, is there. gin. Yeah. You definitely you, get the you gin. You get that. But then you get like so many other things. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say you get about 22 of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. Can can you pick out the <laughs> Carissium Caris- Avernus? Ab- yeah. Yeah. I was going to say yeah, that. Okay. I was totally going to say yeah. that. How about the, uh, the, the Tennessee and Bulgaria? Yeah. yeah. I get it. It's crazy. <laughs> Tennessee. I knew I could smell some Tennessee up in here. How how about the uh, Mentha Spica Tata? I didn't get that. It's funny that you were able to <laughs> pinpoint it. You know, I probably would have got there, yeah. but I didn't notice it no, right, off, okay. right off the bat. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense. That, that one's a little bit, you know, yeah. muted. Now that you say that, that's what I'm getting. You now. pick that one out? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm being influenced by your suggestions. Well, that's okay. I, I generally am a positive influence. Generally. I'm generally. Gonna say, Generally, generally, right. <laughs> I see what you did on the palette, man. Wow, it is dramatic. It is okay. Yes, it is dramatically different, but it is like also elements of the same. Like it, it does have the juniper nature there. It does have like the bright floral nature. There's also just a lot of other things going on. Like it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint everything just because there's so much going on. Well, and the the bizarre thing about this is like understanding that it's brooklotic. Yeah, and how much Brook Lodic we've done yeah. and tasted and things. Right. I hate to say that it it has that feel to it. Yeah. Like there's something about this. Like I, w- I, I just looked at it, the bottle to see like, are they, do they potentially like age this at all no. in, in, in some of their X casks? Like, mm-hmm. is there, is what, what kind of an element? Because like, it does like reminisce to Brook Lodic. No, in it, some strange it is, way. It is just, it is, pure the island botanicals and I, I think like what you're hinting at to me is like all of the air around the distillery and maybe this the is air too, yeah the water maybe this is too nuanced i don't know but i, the, I would the, like to the think stills about stills that they're using sure i'd like to think about it this way like you're you're getting that in the barrel right just not as like you know it takes 16 years or, or whatever right 
But with this, because you're infusing it into the distillate itself, you're getting like that, but just turn up to 11. I agree. And like, I, I feel like you can taste all of those things. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know that I'd be able to like pinpoint it, but no. like just having that information in my head and knowing how much we love Brook Lottic, right? I feel like there's something about this that tastes Brook Lottic y. I mean, I feel like you would need it like legitimately a PhD in chemistry to figure out each one of these things individually. Like, oh, there is the such and such, and there is the such and well, such. Like we, that, that, that's there's the water source, right? That they're using. We we were jesting earlier. I mean, we're good. We're professionals. We're not that good. We can yeah. pick out. Yeah, well, sure. When we get our PhDs in chemistry, that's when we know. Is that a study of alcohol? I mean, it can be. I guess I'll sign up. I'll take that course. Woo. But y- you really? <laughs> yeah. I'll take chemistry one hundred and one. That's gonna be sick. <laughs> I don't want to do this. This ain't got nothing to do with alcohol. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a drinking course. So, in in relation to the tank array, though. You can tell that the botanist is a much more curated, much more, dare I say, local and terroir driven product. Same ABV? Pretty close. Or is it, or is the botanist a, a, a slightly lower? Botanist was, what did I say? Botanist is 46. Tanqueray is 94 proof. So botanist is two proof points lower. No, it's the same. No. 92? 94.6. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I heard 92. <laughs> <laughs> weird how that works <laughs> it's it's interesting that i feel like the flavor profile on the botanist is ever so not as potent yeah it's, it's not a little like, more subtle yeah the yeah. volume on the tangeray for whatever reason is like 11 yeah agreed. botanist is like 10 yep different yeah and, and i can see that like i know we made that kind of uh, analogy earlier about you know the volume but i would say like if you're comparing the two the tangeray is a little more bitey the tangeray is a little more yeah, yeah sharp yeah. and and, Forceful. and I think I know why. Because Tanqueray is not meant to be had straight. It's Tank, meant as a mixer. It's meant as gin and tonic or right. maybe a, um, a, a martini. So like it's, right. it's meant to stand up to that. Gotcha. Uh, whereas the botanist is supposed to be a little more subtle. Like you, you know, we can make it into a um, gin and tonic later, but it's supposed to be more sipping. I love that they add on to the bottle conceived, mm-hmm. distilled, and hand crafted. I mean... Here in the U.S., anywhere that you can find a Brooklady product, you can find the botanist. And I think they're, they're yeah, probably just yeah, distributed. And it, it's yeah. a pretty widely um, it's available. pretty well everywhere. Yeah. Yep. And it's a great, great gin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of great gins, you want to move on to our next one? Okay. Yeah. So I've had um, a fair number of local American gins. There's a gin out of Wisconsin, and I know that they've they've come under some financial troubles lately. So I don't even know if they they still make this, but it was Death Death's Door Gin. And it was out of Wisconsin, and it was it was good stuff. And I, I man, I, I I hope it's still made. I, I haven't done any research. It was great. Yeah. So much so that like it got me into looking into other American gins. Gotcha. In that kind of period when I was doing that. And I'm gonna say that was maybe 2015, 2016. Yeah, so it was a couple of years ago. Right. But it was like me looking into that and wanting to know a little bit more about gin. So that also got me into like the terroir of gin, if sure. you will. Because I mean you're one hundred percent right. You get those um, you know, spe- regional specific things within gin, right? So you want to move on to one that I think embodies that? Yes. Okay. We're gonna move on, Kyle, to the gray whale gin. Hell yeah! Yeah, I love this bottle. Like, I love the way this bottle looks. Yeah, I love the like the feel of this bottle. It's got a little dimple in the bottom, so if you want to hold it that way, you can. It's yeah. got a, like a lovely wooden top. Yeah, it's made out of California. I I love the way this bottle looks. Yeah, it also like some of the the proceeds of this bottle goes to like different yeah. nautical like conservation. Yeah, conservation organizations. Yep. Um, this is the Gray Whale Gin from Golden State Distillery. Yep. It is perfected, says the bottle. With six Californian botanicals. Perfect. It's juniper from Big Sur, limes from Temecula, fir tree from Sonoma, sea kelp from the Mendocino Coast, mint from Santa Cruz, and almonds from the Central Valley. So this theoretically is California in a bottle. Yeah. I mean, that is cool as hell. That is. That is absolutely amazing that they, they 
Hopefully it's like it's accurate and like that's literally what's <laughs> happening. And we're not just getting like gaslit. But right. like that's so cool. It really is. And and the bottle's like this beautiful baby blue color. Yeah. Like it's just slightly um opaque. Yeah, yeah. No, it's mostly opaque. It's just very subtly I don't know if it's transparent or translucent. Yeah. But you can just you can just see through it. Sure. See like the, the liquid inside, but yeah. you can't like obviously like see the liquid inside. There's some bottle words on here. Load me up. Gray whale gin. Every year, the California gray whale makes a 12,000-mile migration from the warm lagoons of the Baja Peninsula to the cool waters of the Arctic. Cool. Same. (laughs) I do that every year. Cool waters. That's a little bit of an understatement, but okay. Our small batch gin is a celebration of this incredible journey. Taste your way along the Pacific coastline with every sip of this award-winning gin. First... The aroma of fresh citrus hits you, followed by juniper and subtle hint of coastal fir trees. As you move up the path, mint and umami flavors of kombu sea kelp are rounded out by a beautiful, lasting almond finish. Six California botanicals in harmony with juniperus, comus, citrus, latifolia, peppermint, and our other classic gin botanicals create a unique taste that makes gray whale gin unlike any other gin in the world. Enjoy the journey. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to pop this bottle. Both of these, the Botanist and the Graywell Gin, were actually a, a Christmas present from Carol this this past Christmas. And I was like, I really want to try these two. So she found them, bought them. And um, I got to be honest, I've really fallen in love with the Graywell Gin. Same. I, I mean, had to go buy one. I know you did. It's that it, one. It is uh, this bottle on the table. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, before we, I, I just want to lay that out there before we talk about it on the nose. It's just like ever so slightly different. I don't even feel like it's slightly. You think it's like I feel like dramatically? It's like dramatically different. I mean, the gin is like way muted. Yeah, it's like way towards the bottom of everything that you're nosing and I get like presented with. Salt air, like heavy salt air. Like I get something that's like it's very herbal. Yeah. Like I think of like all the different it it for whatever reason it takes me back to like childhood of walking around in a pasture or in a, in, you know, just in a, yeah. And like, we used to have like wild onions mm-hmm. and we would like go and like grab those and like rip them up and smell them and stuff. And like, ew. <laughs> but it was like, it, it's that sort of like wild, yeah. herbal, untamed thing. Absolutely. That's on this nose. It's, it's so like, but then like wrapped around in this like very, you know, eloquent and like, uh, that's perfect. Beautiful. That's perfect. Bouquet. Of yeah. It's like gin. It's like all of these like spiky notes and flavors, but like wrapped up in a like, just, I don't know, like a perfect bouquet. And like, hey, like all of these individually are going to be too much. But right. we're going to put these all together and like, here you yeah, go. Find the Here's right level. Perfect version. And what I love, and, and maybe it's a little bit of marketing here too, but I feel like like salty, got it. Fur piney got it yeah and it's just like wow those are the, the two predominant notes for me all right Woo. you ready yep I, I poured heavy pours i'm glad you did well you know the thing is like because it's a clear spirit i feel like we can get away with it but I, I know that maybe that's not entirely true it's still what was the gray whale i don't think i said gray whale comes in at it's not on the bottle it's on the back 43 percent. so 86 so it's actually respectable yeah yeah, it's not. It's not bottom it's, line. It's the 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 second highest there you go. from the bottom. <laughs> Man, that is so different on the palate. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it really is. Like that's that that to me is like the entry point of my fascination with which is going to be gin. Is that they can be that different? Yeah. Like I can't tell you how many times I've been dare I say disappointed with bourbons. Interesting. Because I'll get one that I'm really excited to try, and this one's gonna be. It's going to set itself apart. Right. And then it's like, ah, it's just kind of bourbon. It's right. just kind of quintessential bourbon. It's there. It's got the bourbon qualities, sure. but it doesn't do anything else with it. And I think that's why, like, I think we've been always been so impressed with Detling. Right. Because it definitely does. It separates itself. You know, like the, the, the really strong weeders and things that we've had. Yep. Yeah. That's the difference is that it has that thing. You get a, a, a phenomenal rye. Boom, yeah, it it, it's apart. completely different. It has a different quality to it. Yeah, I mean, just in these four that we've had here, yep, they've all been very individual and different. And they're all gin, 
but they're all so different. And then to end with this, which is like, yeah, I I gotta be honest. Like Mm. I was so incredibly pleased. I open like I even opened this bottle on Christmas day. Yeah. And I just, I drank it straight and I was like the whole bottle. No, (laughs) no. Well, nah, I didn't. (laughs) I, I, I popped into Glen Karen, probably had about this much, drank it straight, and I was like, that is fantastic. Right. And then I had to open the bottom of this because, you know, well, I got it too. Right. And drank that. I was like, that is fantastic. But it's fantastic but it's in a totally different. different way. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. it's not even remotely the same. It's it's almost, like, it's not even the same of, like, drinking scotch and bourbon. Like, it's not even in that realm category. Like, it's right. just, it's, yes, it's all the same kind of distance distillation kind of thing but there's just so many different things going on that that's what makes me like super excited about the gin world is like god there's so many things yeah like i mean i i've very briefly been to california right <laughs> so certainly don't understand any like i i wouldn't say like yeah no I, I get the vibe of california right but like just in our journeys of drinking sure if you can't smell the difference here yeah that's unfortunate yeah because it, it it's absolutely there Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, it seems like it's so much more prominent through gin. It really, truly is. Especially if, I mean, if it is kind of like, no, nah, what, what we're getting here is specifically Brooklotic and Scotland specific, right. Isla specific botanicals. And this is specifically California. And that's why it tastes like this. I want to taste everything. Right. I'm going to say that because of the locality and the uh, botanicals used, that gin has a far more terroir aspect than whiskey does. I would say that it's more akin to wine in terms of like, you know, there are people that can pick out this grape this year, this winery, this, you know, whatever. And I feel like gin is that same kind of way that like, Wow, there's a more floral note here. There's a more a minty note here. There's a more limey note here. Like all of those things are mixing together. That's what makes this specific drink fun to me. Yeah. Is that you can start to like locale pinpoint, wow, this is so hyper specific and local. Well, and, it, and it'd be really interesting too to have like distilleries that are bought into that concept. Yeah. And like may, maybe it is like a situation where it's like, uh, you know what? Like, the, the, the things that we grasp hold of because they define what we are, maybe they're not great. Right. But here's a true taste. But this is what we are. what it is. Exactly. And you could totally, like, get behind that. All right. I got an idea. Yeah. How about, to round this episode out, we make the quintessential gin cocktail. Yep. All right. What's that? That is the gin and tonic. I've heard of it. <laughs> Once or twice? I've never had one. Are you serious? Yep. We got to do the thing. Yeah. Okay, Never let's, had it. let's do it. Now, we, we've got all the ingredients here. Do you want to make this with Grey Whale, Botanist, or we can make two separate ones and try them both? Whatever you want to do. Can be honest? Yep. Let's just use the Grey Whale. Okay. We, we, that was our last one. We, we sang its praises. I love the Botanist. Tanqueray's not bad. Let's use Grey Whale. Okay. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to need. Yep. We're going to need a little bit of ice. Got it. Ice check. I had his ice. We're going to need us a glass. What kind of glass? Uh, let's go with a, a rocks glass. Got it. Now, normally we would build this in uh, just in our rocks glass, but because we're we're gonna split basically a cocktail, uh, I'm gonna actually build it in a shaker. Okay. Okay. First of all, a little bit of ice, just in our shaker. Hmm. A little bit of ice in our glass. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not being super um, judicious with our measuring here in terms of ice, but if you really want, you can find, you know, gin and tonic recipes, but we are going to use my favorite tonic syrup. That is the Jack Rudy cocktail company, classic tonic syrup. This is actually out of Charleston, South Carolina. Cool. This stuff is fan fucking tastic. <laughs> there is no other way to say that's that. what's up. Yeah. I love Jack Rudy cocktail company. Well, the there classic tonic syrup. See, it's, see, like my my so worries, good. my my concerns of like this is gonna be the best gin tonic I'll ever have. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty concerned right now. Well, I'm not gonna lie. You, might, you might should be. You, you might, might should. Be. I might be. Yeah. So uh, you, right. you can you know you can use whatever tonic water or tonic syrup that you like. Uh, if you you know if you want to grab a fever tree, fever tree is great. You can I mean you yeah. If you, gr- if you want a lesser product, you can do that thing. Pro tip: the the classic G and T on the uh, the Jack Rudy cocktail companies. 
tonic syrup mm-hmm. says 0. 0.75 ounces, I like to go an ounce. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the rules. I know. I like it. I know. I, just, I, like, I like to go an ounce. Think outside the box. Thank you. We're going to do two ounces of our gray whale gin. Beautiful. And we're going to do a lime wedge. I'm just going to kind of spritz my lime in there a little bit. You know what? I like double lime. That's just how I like my G&Ts. So I'm going to double line it. Double line it. Because I'm building in a cocktail shaker, I'm just going to give it a quick shake. Get everything combined. Whoa, 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 whoa. I uh-huh. think there's a critical element we haven't added. We're getting there. Oh, okay. Yeah, relax, relax. Okay, sorry. Hand me that glass. <laughs> my apologies. Listen, I'm a skilled professional. You, you freak me out for a second. I'm like, what? <laughs> I haven't opened the tonic. All right. So that's all. I, I just mixed it into a, a glass real quick, or into a shaker real quick. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pour it half into my glass, half into your glass. Do it. Mm. Now that we've got those ingredients in our glass. Yeah. We are going to top this with club soda. Gotcha. Now I know you're thinking, why not tonic water? Don't worry, Kyle. Our tonic classic syrup, or our classic tonic syrup from Jack Rudy, that takes care of our quinine, our tonic, and it takes it's, care of all that. It's already in there. Exactly. So you don't need tonic water. You could add if you want. So we're just going to use the classic club soda. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Can I have your glass? Super sophisticated measurement. Man, crowd goes wild. All right. We've got our G&T. G's and T's. Yep. Slight, like a little bit of club soda, a little bit of our tonic yeah, syrup. Well, Here it. we go. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Like you still, you still get the the the, the all the gin. It's yep. it's still it's it's there, but it's wrapped around this like delicious lime, mm. carbonated. Yeah, it's slightly soda. sweet. Slightly sweet, like the tonic syrup just makes it just a hint yeah. sweeter. No, I get it, man. I want to go cut the grass right now. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's delightful. This Sorry. to me is the the perfect cocktail. Three simple, four simple ingredients: gin, tonic syrup, <clears throat> soda water, lime. Done. And you you still get those terroir notes. It's light. It's refreshing. You could drink a couple of these, and be perfect. They're not heavy. It's quite tasty. There's like there's like a simplicity, simplicity exactly of it that I totally get. It's an alcoholic sprite. Sure. Um, I know, mean, you could make a poor man's G and T alcoholic sprite, just sprite and sprite and gin. Yeah, you're good. delicious. My God, I I agree, man. Uh, on the grass cutting realm, yeah, that'll do the thing. Faux show, listen, refreshing AF. And I'll say this: like it is to me, it is a a cocktail you can drink in the summer, you can drink in the winter, you can drink in the Florida winter. It, it's it's perfect just about any time. And it's it's satisfying, but it's not. This is what I love about it. It's not heavy. You got anything else? I don't think so. No, me neither. I want to know, Kyle. Yep. From the people, what are your thoughts on gin? Be- I don't. I don't disagree with you. I think there there should be there should be a huge surge, a gin surge. I I agree, and um, not just because you know we're getting on in the ground floor or something, but because man, I freaking love gin. I do. I really do. And I want more people to try it, and I want more people to like it, too. On that note, we'd love to know what you think about gin, and what are your favorite gins, if you've had any? Yeah, let us know, because, like, for me, it's a new thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm totally interested, but I'm down to do it. Yep, for sure. Listen, go grab yourself some tonic water. If you are feeling fancy, go get yourself a bottle of the uh, Jack Rudy tonic syrup. Mix that with a little bit of gin. Mix that with some club soda and a lime. Set yourself up for a great gin and tonic. Tell us about it. Tell us what we need to mix together. Uh, We're really interested in your thoughts and opinions. Totally. Well, you can get in touch with us through email. It's drippingstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. It's always one word, drippingstone. D-R-E-P and stone. Come find us. Like a thing. Share a thing. Look at our TikToks because like, we do some really fun things. Or our reels. Ooh. There's our like, Instagram and Facebook. Those are it's good. Like a, there's like Those a, are like good. A so good. Combination thing yeah. there. Um, yeah, totally fun. Those if you, are good. If you do that... Like a thing, share a thing, comment on a thing. Beautiful. And you did the thing. Speaking of doing it all, you can also support the podcast through our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Stone. Building an awesome community there. You get some fresh cracks. You get some pours with Drep or Stone. So Kyle or I, uh, sometimes 
together, which is just Sometimes. like drink specific. Uh, you also get uh, episode <laughs> notes and some really cool access to some really cool things. Indeed. You can also support the podcast by rating, dropping some wherever it is you find great podcasts like this one. And finally, Kyle. Finally. You can support the podcast by telling someone about Trep and Stone. Let's say you're out to dinner. You're like, you know what? I want something light. I want something refreshing. Arby's. I don't want to be bogged. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be bogged down for the rest of the night. I'm going to order a gin and tonic. <laughs> at Arby's? Shit. <laughs> yeah. Where are you at? It's a fancy Arby's. And no you, shit. So you walk up to the bartender and you're like, yeah. I heard about gin and tonics on Drip and, and Stone. And I've heard about your curly fries. <laughs> I've heard about gin and tonics on Drep and Stone. Which gin, and, which gin do you recommend with your best tonic? Pair it up. Uh, that person will pour you up a great gin and tonic. You will which, thank which them. Which gin do you think they'll use? Got to be the Gray Well. I hope so. If not, it's the botanist. I hope so. And if the not, four that we just tasted. They will pour you up a gin and tonic. You will say thank you so much for this G and T. Have you heard about Drep and Stone? They'll say actually, I'm a Patreon subscriber. You're a dripping stoner? I'm a dripping stoner. Yeah. Give me those curly fries. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow. And your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Damn mosquitoes. Skeeters everywhere, you know what I mean? Sadly, I do. Are you admitting to a felony? No, sir. Oh, okay, just checking. Unbelievable content right there. I believe it. Jeff Bezos is in the truck outside. Is that construction? Backing up for a long time. Mentos, the fresh maker. Oh, shit. Was your line. I'm sorry. What the fuck? <laughs> just one beep. Boop. Did you enjoy your experience? I did. What? None. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I can already see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> we two drinks in. I know where we're at. I know where we're at. <laughs> I think this is the episode. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this four years. I know where this is going. <laughs> we got what we need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but will you grab some ice? Sure. Okay. Ice, not ass. Oh. I feel like you're lying to me. No, I'm not. I need to go potty right quick. <laughs> As you wish. Mm. This is my class. Is it? Yeah. Because I had my head back. And I wasn't looking. You were holding that glass the entire time. How would I have taken that glass? I didn't put it down. No. I understand that 12 is more than four. <laughs> so there's... Even though I went to school that, in Alabama, I understand. But 12 I, is more than I four. I understand. That's got two numbers. <laughs> That's only got one. Right. Wow. <laughs> Jim Beam. Or... <laughs> oh, my God. With your best curly fry. <laughs> <laughs>